Welcome to SAT Prep Thursday. Today we're doing practice test number one, part three. This is a no calculator section. Also, there is a file link in the description for this practice test. If one minus x over three is equal to k and k is equal to three, what is the value of x? So first, let's just go ahead and substitute that value of three in for k. This means I can multiply both sides by three, giving me x minus one is nine. Adding one to both sides gives us x is 10. So d is the answer. For i is equal to the square root of negative one, what is the sum of seven plus three i plus a negative eight plus nine i? The very first thing we want to do is go ahead and get rid of the parentheses by distributing that plus sign, which really means we wind up with 7 plus 3i minus 8 plus 9i. Here we go ahead and combine like terms so that 7 minus 8 is negative 1, and 3 plus 9 is 12, and that is an i. So a is the answer. On Saturday afternoon, Armand sent M text messages each hour for five hours, and Tyrone sent P text messages each hour for four hours. Which of the following represents the total number of messages sent by Armand and Tyrone on Saturday afternoon? So we can say Armand sent M text messages each hour. This means that Armand is equal to 5M. Tyrone sent P text messages each hour for four hours. This means that T would be equal to four P. Now really what we're looking for is an A plus T. So we wind up with five M plus four P, which is C. Kathy is a repair technician for a phone company. Each week she receives a batch of phones that need repairs. The number of phones that she has left to fix at the end of each day can be estimated with the equation P is equal to 108 minus 23D, where P is the number of phones left and D is the number of days she has worked that week. What is the meaning of the value of 108 in this equation? Well, we know that D is the number of days that she has. We're going to focus with the question, what is the meaning of that 108? If we understand that if D were equal to zero, so if she had zero days, then she would have P is equal to 108 minus 23 times zero. This would mean that P was equal to 108. Remember, P is the number of phones left. This means that Kathy starts each week with 108 phones to fix. Which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? Now what we have is two terms, really, because they're held within parentheses. We're going to need to get rid of these parentheses by distributing this negative sign. So let's write this as x squared y minus 3y squared plus 5x y squared, this first term. Now we're gonna distribute the second term while writing it underneath the first term so that we can now have a plus x squared y plus three y squared minus three x y squared. And at this point we get to combine like terms to give us two x squared y plus 2xy squared, which is c. A pediatrician uses the model above to estimate the height h of a boy in inches in terms of the boy's age a in years, between the ages of two and five. Based on the model, what is the estimated increase in inches of a boy's height each year? The key here is to just simply understand that we're dealing with y is equal to mx plus b as the form of this equation, and that the m represents the change. That means that three represents the change, so a is the answer. The formula above gives the monthly payment m needed to pay off a loan of p dollars at r percent annual interest rate over n months. Which of the following gives p in terms of m R and N. Now, ultimately, we have a whole big ugly mess here. We're going to just deal with this like this. We're going to say if 
A is equal to B over C times D because we can see this is as if this whole top was the letter B and the whole bottom was the letter C. All I've done is gone to easier letters to work with. If I'm now solving for D, that means I can say A times the inverse, so C over B, would be equal to D. Remember that A is M, so I want an M being multiplied, and all of them have that. Then I have C. This whole mess, the minus 1. This is the only equation that has that in the numerator. The denominator was this whole big ugly mess that was on top. What is the solution x, y to the system of equations above? Well, I'm going to solve this by using the elimination method. So I'm going to copy the first equation, 3x plus 4y is equal to negative 23. But I'm going to rewrite the bottom equation so that it's in standard form, negative x plus 2y is equal to negative 19. I see that it's going to be easy to get rid of these y's if I multiply the bottom equation by a negative 2. This means I'm going to have 3x plus 4y is equal to negative 23. Now distributing this negative 2, so negative 2 times negative x is a positive 2x. Negative 2 times 2y is a negative 4y. Negative 2 times negative 19 is a positive 38. I'm going to add both of these equations together and have eliminated my y's, which was the initial goal. This is going to give me 5x is equal to 15, or x is equal to 3. Now, the thing is, in the answers, there's only one where x is equal to 3, so b is the answer. For the function g defined above, a is a constant, and g of 4 is equal to 8. What is the value of g of negative 4? Well, we know that g of 4 is equal to 8, so we can substitute these values into this equation, giving us 8 is equal to a times 4 squared plus 24. This means I'm going to wind up with 16a plus 24 on the right side. So if I subtract 24 from both sides, I'm going to get negative 16 is equal to 16a, or negative 1 is a. So g of negative 4 would be equal to our now known value of negative 1 for a times negative 4 squared plus 24. Negative 4 squared is 16, and 16 times negative 1 is negative 16. Plus 24 means that g of negative 4 is 8, and a is the answer. In the equation above, B and C represent the price per pound in dollars of beef and chicken, respectively, X weeks after July 1st during the last summer. What is the price per pound of beef when it is equal to the price per pound of chicken? So what we're looking for is when is B equal to C? This means I get 2.35 plus 0.25C is equal to 1.75 plus 0.4x. I said C and that's actually an X right there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and move this 1.75 to the other side by subtracting. So 2.35 minus 1.75 will give me a 0.6. Subtract 0.25X from both sides to get 0.15X. Divide by 0.15 and I get 0.6 divided by 0.15 which is actually 6 divided by 10 divided by 15 over 100, which is the same as 6 over 10 times 100 over 15. This means I can eliminate that 10, eliminate that 0 up there so that I get 60 divided by 15, which means I have a 4. Now, this is 4 for the x value. I need to find out what c would be. I get c is equal to 1.75 plus 0 0.4 times 4. 
this 0.4 times 4 is 1.6. So 1.6 plus 1.75 means that C is 3.35. And I can find D is the answer. A line in the XY plane passes through the origin and has a slope of 1 over 7. Which of the following points lies on the line? If I were to just look at this as a graph, I know we go through the origin. I know that if I go up 1, right 7, I know that I get 7, 1. Now, this was here to go ahead and confuse me, so I'm going to eliminate that. But if I go up 1, right 7 again, I get the point 14, 2. So 14, 2 is the answer. If x is greater than 3, which of the following is equivalent to this whole mess right here? So I want to rewrite this big, ugly mess as an even bigger, uglier mess. I'm going to make the top a fraction of 1 over 1. I'm going to put this all over x plus 3 plus x plus 2 all over x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now to find this, all I did is I multiplied the left one by x plus 3 in the top and bottom, the right one by x plus 2 in the top and bottom, which gave me a common denominator. It's important to remember that if I have a divided by b divided by c divided by d, then what I actually have is a over b times d over c. I get to multiply by the inverse of the denominator. We also want to remember that when we're dealing with a is equal to b and they're both equal to 1, what I actually have is 1 over 1 over c over d is equal to d over c. So I'm really looking at this flipped from the denominator that I had up here. So I want to see that x squared plus 15x plus 6 in the numerator, which I have in b. Now you might be looking at this bottom and saying the denominator is not the same as what we had in the numerator up here. And that's because we would need to combine these like terms. x plus x would give us the 2x and 3 plus 2 would give us the 5. If 3x minus y was equal to 12, what is the value of 8 to the x divided by 2 to the y. So if I understand what I'm looking at here, I see 2 cubed is my 8 value, and it is raised to the x power, so I have 2 to the 3x. Now this is divided by 2 to the y power. Understanding about exponents and how those works, this means I have 2 to the 3x minus y. Now, we already know that 3x minus y, see, they gave that to us here, is 12. So we get 2 to the 12 power, which is a. If ax plus 2 times bx plus 7 is equal to 15x squared plus cx plus 14, for all values of x, a plus b is equal to 8, what are the two possible values of c? We're going to start with the very simple finding a times b is 15. I know this because it gives it to us here. This is a matter of knowing how to do your distributive property. Then I also know that a plus b is equal to 8 because they told us. So we're going to list our factors to find them. If I start with the 1 and 15, that makes 16, which is not 8. Negative 1, negative 16, or negative 15, that makes a negative 16. That does not work either. 3 times 5 would make 15, and they do add up to 8. So what this means is it gives us a 5x plus 2 times 3x plus 7. It also gives us the chance of 3x plus 2 times 5x plus 7, because I don't know which leading value would be the 3 or the 5, so I need to try both of them. Multiplying this out, I'm going to get 15x squared plus 35x, distributing that 5x, but now distributing the 2 will give me a 6x plus 14, 
adding up these middle terms, because it's really what I care about, I get a 41X. Now that's nice to have a 41. I do have a 41 in the answers. We can check this one over here where we would get a 15X squared plus 21x when we distribute the 3x. When we distribute the two, we get a plus 10x plus 14. Again, it's only the middle term that we care about where we get a 31x. So D is the answer. If t is greater than zero and t squared minus four is equal to zero, what is the value of t? Well, let's just solve this equation here so that I can have t squared minus four is zero. This means that t squared is equal to four or that t is equal to plus or minus the square root of four, which is equal to plus or minus two. Now, t must be greater than zero. So the minus two is out, leaving us t is two. A summer camp counselor wants to find the length x in feet across the lake as represented in this sketch above. The lengths represented by AB, EB, and BD and CD on the sketch were determined to be 1,800 feet, 1,400 feet, 700 feet, and 800 feet respectively. Segments AC and DE intersect at B and angle AEB and angle CBD have the same measure. What is the value of X? So let's start by filling in some values. We know that this is 1800. This is 1400. We get a 700 and an 800. We also know that this angle is congruent to this angle. That 800 was placed in a wrong spot. It belongs here at CD. Now, all we're going to do to solve this is we're going to set up a proportion where we're going to say CD divided by X, because this is what we're after, is going to be BD divided by EB. And this is simply by saying certain parts like the small over the large of those triangles, small over the large, then we say the small BD over the large EB, we need to make sure we're using corresponding parts of the triangles. This means we have 800 divided by X is equal to 700 divided by 1400. This is going to give us that X is 1600. According to the system of equations above, what is the value of X? Knowing that what we're really looking for is X, we're going to use the elimination method to get rid of Y in the top equation. To do that, we're going to multiply everything by negative 2, giving us negative 2X minus 2Y plus 18, and then copy the bottom equation of X plus 2Y is equal to negative 25. We add both of these equations together, eliminating the y's, giving us a negative x is equal to negative 7, so x is 7. In a right triangle, one angle measures x degrees, where sine of x degrees is equal to 4 over 5. What is the cosine of 90 minus x degrees? Now, this is the complementary angle relationship. So what we actually have is that the sine of x is equal to the cosine of 90 minus x. If we were to try and visualize this in a triangle, a right triangle, what we have is in x degrees, we have a known 5, a known 4, and this angle right here is 90 minus x. So we have 4 over 5 is equal to the cosine of 90 minus x. Now remember what we're actually searching for here is the cosine of 90 minus x. This means that 4 over 5 is the answer or you might look at this as 0 0.8. If a is equal to 5 square root of 2 and 2a is equal to the square root of 2x, what is the value of x? So I'm going to say, what if I took two times this equation? Meaning I had 2a was equal to 2 times 5 times the square root of 2. This would give me 2 times 5 times the square root of 2. Now at this point, that would be a 2a. 
2a in this case is equal to the square root of 2x. This means that I would be dealing with 10 square root of 2 is equal to the square root of 2x. If I square both sides of the equation, so I square the square root of 2x and I square 10 times the square root of 2. This is going to give me 100 times 2, which is 200. This is going to give me 2x. So if I divide both sides by 2, I get 100 is equal to x.